Forge FC is ready for their upcoming match. Simply stunning stuff. And finally, their goal. My word, what a rocket. Now, let's get you up to date with Anthony Urcioli and Match Day Preview on the Forge Audio Network. Hello, Forge fans. Anthony Urcioli with you. It is the Match Day Preview a bit of deja vu. I feel like we've already previewed a Valor Forge match this week. So back-to-back matches on the road in Winnipeg against Valor Forge, not getting the result they wanted in the first one, losing one nothing. And you know, ultimately, it was a match that Forge was unhappy with on multiple levels. Um, they were unhappy with the way the match ended, with a little skirmish at the end between two teams that clearly, clearly feeling the effects of the playoff push and uh, what's becoming a rivalry between these two clubs but Forge also not happy with the way they started that match here's head coach and technical director Bobby Smirniotis talking about the way Forge started in that loss to Valor on Wednesday night I thought we came out and uh, we, to be honest we didn't start well um, and then from the run of play from a couple of mistakes of ours we're, we're down one nil and now we've given uh, some life to to an opponent to defend to defend a little bit deeper and do all that, but I thought our reaction was was good in the last part of the second half. Uh, we created some very good opportunities. They've cleared one uh, off the line um, there, and I thought again we started well in the in the second half. Uh, some were missing that little bit of punch in the in the final third um, to get into the spaces that were available um, that we saw were available before the game. Uh, they were available uh, in the game, and we just didn't take advantage of them. And then you're looking for an opportunity, and as the game goes on. Obviously, for Valor, it's a very important game for them as well. And uh, they're very comfortable just sitting back and soaking up what pressure they need. And, you know, you, you see what you get from there. Now, if the uh, match in review is still available, by the way, if you want to go back and listen to that uh, or watch it. Jessica Lisi, um, who was co-hosting with me that match in review, we, we were talking throughout the match. And Jess said something interesting that I thought really stood out. Um, at the end of the match as well. It, it just it doesn't look like Forge. It hasn't looked like Forge over the past couple of, uh, of weeks. Um, it's just they're not playing their game. Here is Alex Ashenyoti Janssen after that Valor match. His comments on Forge's uh, winless streak, which is now, what, up to uh, four matches. Uh, I think Coach said it. We didn't, uh, didn't come out our best, me including, I think, the... The quality we uh, we put out is not just not good enough, and uh, we get punished for it in the in the beginning of the game. And then I don't know. It feels uh, feels off. We feel off. We have been feeling off the last four games. And I think we need to come together as a group, all of us, um, and, and find find uh, what we had during those six that six game uh, win streak. Yeah. Prior to this, you know, this three in the last four, it's been three losses, one draw. They had a six-match winning streak going into that. So, thankfully, because of that winning streak, Forge is in still pretty good position. Top of the table, Atletico Ottawa, 39 points after 22 matches. Calvary is 37 after 22, so they're two points back. Forge is at 36 points, so they're one back at Calvary and three out of the top spot, but they played one less match than both Atletico and Calvary. So, still in pretty decent shape, and they have uh, one point on Pacific, who is level on matches, and then Valor. Why? I mean, Valor's been on fire, and it's because they are playing for their season. This is the definition of desperation football. Valor with 33 points. They're two points out of a playoff spot, uh, but they've also played one more match than Forge and Pacific. With a win, though, Valor can move into the top four tied with Forge and potentially leapfrog, uh, leapfrogging Pacific, depending on what uh, Pacific do this week. So Valor needs this. They need three points. Forge, you need. You, this is not a match you can lose. You cannot drop another three points to Valor. Not only are you allowing Valor back into the playoff picture, you, you're losing ground on the two clubs ahead of you. Typically, historically, 50 points is kind of the benchmark of... If you want to finish the top of the table, just I know that you know this, this league's been around for three and a half years. Historically speaking, 50 points should guarantee you that top spot. And with all the parity happening this season, 50 will probably get it done. Forge is at 36 right now. 
So how do they get 14 points over the last seven matches? Well, let me break this down for you. Um, because it's looking better than it feels. And that's okay. If you're a Forge fan, and things are feeling kind of low right now, it means you're used to some pretty incredible things from this club. And if you're Forge and you're, you know, you heard it, Forge is very disappointed in the way they've been playing. But there's still only three points at a first place with a match in hand. So um, it just goes to show you the, the level, the, the, the expectation level is higher than, than probably anywhere else in the Canadian Premier League. So here's what Forge is looking at. They have Valor. So here we're, we're talking about them needing another 14 points or so. So we're looking at, uh, what, five more wins over their final seven matches. Valor this week. Then they're home to Cavalry. We know how good Cavalry is. But if Forge wants to beat the club, if Forge cannot win these home matches, regardless of the quality of the, the other club, um, you know maybe they don't deserve to be in top spot. I mean, maybe that's the harsh reality. You, you have to be able to get your wins at home. And Forge has struggled recently. So let's say Forge... They're at home to Calvary. That's a September 10th game. We'll have more on that, by the way, because there's a fantastic promotion for the fans looking to attend. So let's say Forge picks up their three points at home to Calvary. They're at Pacific. You know it's going to be a tough one. At Edmonton, very winnable. Home to York, very winnable. Home to Pacific, winnable. Home to Halifax, winnable. So if they can get three points against Valor, they will have five more matches at home and five more wins should lock you up that top spot. So win in Valor, you can even drop points in one of those home matches um, if, if it comes to that. So this, this is a huge opportunity for both clubs and Forge looking to avenge that one nothing loss. Now, let's get a little more familiar with the opponent being Valor FC. Let's head over to Winnipeg. Ed Tate, he is a Hall of Fame journalist. If you're at Tim Hortons Field and you're um, up in the press level ever, you can get a glimpse of the um, the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, uh, the writers and the broadcasters and the journalists. Ed Tate is up there. He's a Hall of Famer. He covers the Blue Bombers for the Canadian Football League, but he also co- uh, covers Valor FC. He is their senior reporter, and he joins us now. Uh, so, Ed, I, I was one of the people that... Uh, you know, at certain parts in the season, when I saw those top four on the table, I was one of the people that counted Valor out. And uh, well, they're, they're, they may be surprising many. Is it a surprise this this late surge here by Valor? Well, uh, given where they were uh, maybe a month ago, Anthony, probably a little bit. Um, but at the end of last year, if you recall, they went on that run at the end of the season and, and basically were a goal short of making the playoffs. And they decided to keep a lot of the roster intact. Uh, and so they, I think they came into this season thinking that they could hunt down one of those four teams. Um, you know, they gave away a lot of points early in the year. And that, you know, that could still cost them in the end. But uh, they started to play some some decent football fairly recently. And, it, and it's starting to show, uh, you know, I think they're four one and one in their last six. And they've had some clean sheets in there too. So there's a lot going right for this team right now. Maybe talk to us about the, the scene at investors group fields uh, Wednesday night with Valor and forge. Was that as close to a playoff game? I mean, did it feel like a playoff match? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure on Valor. They've got to hunt down one of those four teams at the, above them to make the, the playoffs. And so they've sort of been in this tense mode for a while. You can see it in their training. There's, uh, you know, it's just a little bit testier than usual. Um, and then, boy, I'll tell you what, though, I, I could pay to watch those teams play a seven game series if there <laughs> yeah. was. It was like last night. It was something else. I don't know what it brought, what uh, brought it out of both teams. But um, as the game went on, it got nastier and nastier. And we saw what happened at the end of the of the match. And uh I think that's probably going to carry over into Sundays as well. Yeah, yeah. And we'll definitely talk about Moses uh, Dyer in a second. Uh, Forge is used to playing against clubs that use that low block and that like to to all out defend. But I, what Valor did, and I mean, it caught me off guard a little bit, was 
even though Valor was defending, they still got a lot of quality offensive chances through their counter and through their transition. Is that a part of Valor's game that's evolved or has that always been there? I think it's always been there, Anthony. You, you're right about the – I'm not going to pretend to be too much of an X's and O's guys when it comes to the soccer, but they have changed their shape fairly recently. They were more of a traditional, you know, back four. And in the last few matches, they've gone to a three with two – their fullbacks wider uh, and, and pushing more into the midfield, and then they drop back. And, and when they're defending, it's almost like a five-man back line. And when they got that early goal, I think they – they really kind of retreated into that, but you're right. Um, what they do really well, and we saw it on the on the Debrian goal. Uh, they use their speed very well. They like the bigger fields. Um, you know, both uh, Tim Hortons and IG Field are Canadian Football League fields too, so they're bigger than say Clark Clark Field in Edmonton or Starlight Stadium in in Victoria. And they like to use that space um, with their speed. And I think we saw that on Valor's goal. And that makes him pretty dangerous on transition when you have a guy like Sean Rea, too. So, um, you know, these two teams, if you look at the numbers going into last night, they were both ranked first and third in goals for and goals uh, uh, against. Um, Forge being first, Valor being third. So, again, maybe that says something about the points that Valor gave away earlier in the year when mm. you have uh, some pretty good numbers like that. Yeah, and you mentioned some of the fireworks after the match Wednesday, and I, I agree. We'll probably see more of the same on Sunday. You know, you had Tristan Henry kind of in the middle of it for Forge and the fans booing him whenever he touched the ball uh, in stoppage time. And I'd imagine Forge fans probably feel the same about Moses Dyer. How big, I mean, the void that he will leave on Sunday, how, just maybe put into words how big that void is. Well, he's their leading scorer. He's their all-time leading scorer in, in franchise history, as short as that may be. He brings kind of a fire. We saw it last night. I mean, he, he can get under people's skin, and we saw that in the in, in the match Wednesday. Um, he, he's just uh, he kind of drags this team uh, when they're in a lull. You know, he he pulls them into. He has that such a competitive fire. Him and Diego Gutierrez in in the midfield just seem to be. Um, they have that edge to them. I guess that's the polite way to put it. Some some people from Forge might not like it to be termed as an edge. <laughs> uh, but it's going to be a void. Uh, we'll see what they do uh, with their roster. I know Philip DeSantos, the GM head coach, mentioned after the match he was disappointed that Moses got pulled into that at the late in the game, like the 99th minute. The game took forever to finish. Um, and because he was already on the one yellow, so he'll miss Sunday. They could probably... They started Walter Ponce uh, up front uh, on Wednesday. Could probably go back to that. They've got any number of options for for the midfield. So we'll see what they can do. But it, it is going to be a hole in their lineup. So are, are they a different team with Dyer out of the lineup? Would anything change? I know you didn't want to get too much into the X's and O's, but just even just from a, a philosophical standpoint, it, does Valor change when Dyer's not in the lineup? Well, it's weird what they do. So last night they put they had Walter Ponce at the nine and, and Moses dropped back into the midfield, which is uh, he's usually the, the nine. So, again, his versatility also means that they're not locked into what they might do with him out of the lineup because they could play uh, a, a different night could put Ponce back at nine and play a different midfielder or, you know, I'm not sure what they'll do. There's all kinds of, of options still. And, you know, uh, Daryl Fordyce came off the, the, the bench last night. He's a possibility. Matthew Catavolo, who was a sub that didn't play last night. This is one of the things that I'm sure Forge is going to try to manage too on, on Sunday is that this is will be Valor's third match in a week. And so um, Rocco Romeo, who scored the winning goal against Pacific on Sunday, never even saw any minutes last night. But I wouldn't be surprised if he gets some time on Sunday. So uh, we'll see how they, they – they, uh, They'll be, they're off today. They'll be training on Friday. I might be able to get a sneak peek at what they're up to then, but um, they do have some options. Let's put it that way. And we fans in, in Hamilton will know that Winnipeg supports their their sports teams. Uh, of course, you have you have the Jets, but the Blue Bombers as well. How has the city embraced Valor? Uh, which is you know, I mean, the CPL. It's we had that first year, which was pretty solid, and then. COVID slowed the momentum a bit for a couple of seasons. Um, is soccer back in Winnipeg? You know, Anthony, I'll, I'll be honest. The, the attendance numbers aren't where people were hoping. And, you know, 
it was hot in Winnipeg on Wednesday and it was over 30 degrees. I'm not sure if that's a factor. I, I've heard from a lot of the soccer community that uh, there was so much, we had a really wet spring. And so a lot of local soccer games were canceled or postponed. And, and it's been into the summer where kids are still playing and every single night. And mm. sometimes the parents want a break, you know, and they don't want to be on a night off dragging their kids to a soccer match. So I, I think attendance has been a little bit sluggish, I'll be honest. Um, Valor had a really good start to 2019 in terms of attendance. I think the average was about 5,500 to 6,000. And then, you know, we know what happened in the Island games and with COVID and then last year starting in the kickoff bubble here in town, that didn't help anything. And then team has struggled to score goals at home and they haven't been winning a lot of games at home, which doesn't help to bring out the casual fan. I think there's something there. I think this is a soccer town and it could really grow. Um, and it, it's going to take some patience, which is, is hard to convince people sometimes to remain patient when the numbers aren't necessarily there. And I, I Sunday is a weekend game uh, afternoon. Maybe the attendance will be a little, I don't know what the temperature is going to be uh, over there in Winnipeg, but uh, you would think a Sunday game might bring a little more in the attendance, although it is a long weekend. So that is, might be working against them too. So um, either way, I mean, the atmosphere, it sounded great. So when you're watching the game, I think that's kind of, as a league, I think you're looking for at least the optics to, to be there and the empty seats aren't great, but the noise level was high. So w in terms of supporter groups, um, are there multiple supporter groups in Winnipeg? Well, the, the main one is the Red River Rising, the Trench, and those are the, the fans that you hear through the whole game. Those guys are great. They, uh, from even before the start of the match to the very end, even after the end, they are just going loud all the time. Um, it, it's impressive. Uh, we need more of them. We need more supporters groups. Uh, more fans. They're, they're, it's slowly come. It's, it's a build. And again, I think sometimes, you know, you hate to say it's a results oriented business, but it is oftentimes. And the way Valor is playing now, that's going to certainly help the product. You're right about Sunday being a long weekend. The Bombers play that day in Regina too, in the Labor Day Classic. Mm -hmm. So that's always a factor. But I know some of the diehard sport fans will, will love it because it's almost back to back Valor. And then they can hustle home to watch uh, the Bombers in Regina. It, Again, um, the trench and Red River Rising people are spectacular. And if we could uh, duplicate that in a couple more sections in the building, it would be fun. You've seen it. Uh, it's the same as Tim Horton's field. Those big stadiums, CFL stadiums, are they look good on TV. And when they're full, right. it looks it looks big time for the CPL. Yeah, we just we just need to get to that point or, or back to it. Because like you mentioned, that, that first season went really well in Hamilton, too, with the uh, attendance. And pandemic really just kind of killed some of that momentum, but you know, I, I mean, this is a league that was built from scratch and all things considered, I think it's been a pretty uh, solid three and a half years and in, in all the uh, adversity the leagues ha had to face. So after seeing that match now, I, I do, I, you almost want to see a Valor Forge playoff game after, after what we saw last match. So part of me, maybe hopefully not at the expense of Forge, but seeing Valor get in would be, would be great. And maybe, a team like Calvary or Pacific, who's already had their opportunities, can get uh, can get bumped down. Uh, Ed, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much for this. Yeah, thanks, Anthony. It is going to be funny because uh, you know Valor is two points out of a playoff spot, but only six out of first place overall. That's how crazy the it's, top five is right now. It's going to be fun right down the stretch here. Thanks for having me on, Anthony. Yeah, yeah. And just to, to close your point, when all these clubs are playing each other, you know they play each other so often. That these are six point swings here and there, so any anything's possible. So I learned my lesson. Don't count out Valor mid-season when they're out of a, out of a playoff picture. All right. right on. Take care, Ed. Thanks, Anthony. Appreciate it. All right. Great stuff from uh, Ed Tate, as expected. Um, I do want to, at the time of this recording, Moses Dyer, Valor's uh, leading scorer and their, and their best player. You heard it from Ed there. Um, he will not play in this match. He is going to be suspended because of the two yellows in the previous match. That second yellow coming in stoppage time, which, um, you know, <laughs> didn't go over well with, with, with his coach. That is going to be the only suspension unless something changes. I checked with the league. As far from what I've been told, Dyer, as of the time of this recording, is the only player that will miss that match. It's good news for Forge FC. And I have great news for Forge fans. September 10th, the September 
special. Before Forge plays Valor, or rather after Forge plays Valor, Forge will be hosting Cavalry FC. It's the Forge FC plus bench beer sampling match. Saturday, September 10th, 5 o'clock kickoff at Tim Hortons Field. For $29.99, you get a gold level ticket and a bench beer sampling. So for $30, you get your ticket, you get great seats, and you get a beer. And, as always, $5 beer until kickoff. So, I mean, what more could you ask for on a Saturday afternoon in September? Actually, I, I know what would be better. It'd be better if Forge was going into that match against Calvary playing for first place. And probably the only way to do that is for Forge to get three points against Valor. So that is where we are now. Two o'clock Sunday in Winnipeg. Forge, Valor, um, wherever, however you get your Forge content, whether it is through social media, forgefc.ca, on YouTube, or via podcast uh plenty coming up for you including three keys to the match we'll get more into the x's and o's and what forge have to do to secure three points against valor on sunday and after that match the match in review will be available all right should be a good one enjoy Forge FC is prepared, and now you are informed. This has been Match Day Preview with Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. Subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.